Welcome to my fourth video in this range of how to play the London system, which is quite appropriate because I live quite near London. So uh, I guess I should be good at this opening. Um, and in this video, we're going to have a look at Magnus Carlsen, world champion Magnus Carlsen, using the London system uh, from a tournament, the Wake NZ tournament, to defeat the very strong player, Tomachevsky. And this was a very good game, and it showed some brilliant understanding in the middle game. Rather than concentrate on the opening, we're, we're going to sort of see some very nice positional play from Magnus. And in actual fact, this is my top positional game, my favourite positional game from 2016. And I'll explain why. But let's move, first of all, into the 12th after move 12, when Magnus has just played rook to d1. And here, very interesting Black now played knight to g6, and uh, we're going to see now two exchanges, which I just think are amazing. They're exchanges I wouldn't consider, and it just shows how positionally strong Magnus is. Now, in this kind of normal position, nothing's been exchanged yet. Magnus showed a very deep understanding of the position, and he understood here that Black's worst minor piece is this bishop on b7. And this is just something I want to show everyone. This bishop is bad because it's stuck in behind the pawn on d5. It's a very bad piece. And now Magnus goes into some exchanges to amplify how bad this piece is. And he now plays bishop takes g6. And this is a very unusual idea, giving up that bishop, which is generally a good piece. But all he's trying to do is exchange off black's two best most active minor pieces, which was the knight there attacking the bishop. And after black recaptures, he now exchanges off the other most active minor piece, the bishop on d6. And here, the point behind his whole plan is he can plonk his knight upon the e5 square, and he's aiming to play against the bad bishop on b7. And I just really like the small exchanges that Magnus played here. And he plays tactically brilliant in a second or two. But for premium members, we'll have a look how this position was built up. And this is premium members and chess.com subscribers. And we'll have a look at the end of this game. But just for those of you who jumped in for this little segment, those two exchanges, I think, is, is really one of the main things about this video. And it should be something you all bear in mind. Look for exchanges that help you and try to leave your opponent with his worst minor piece. So exchange off minor pieces to leave your opponent with a worst minor piece. In this game, it's the bishop on b7. But OK, let's now go back to the start for those users, uh, the members of chess.com subscribers. And the game starts as a London system. So Tomaszewski plays knight to s6. We're, I'm recommending you go bishop to f4 here in the London system. But after knight to f3, the position quickly becomes the same e6 and now we play bishop to f4 so if you've seen again the previous videos in this series you'll, you'll know all about what ideas you should be playing and here black plays b6 and this is a a queen's indian setup or should we say also an opening which Nimzo Indian players would like to play this this kind of way of playing with B6. And it's it's really, I think, the London system, a great opening against this. Black can quickly go wrong and he can quickly lose track of what he should be doing. So what do we do? Well, we finish creating our pyramid. So Magnus plays E3. Bishop B7 is now played. And here, a typical Magnus move. I don't necessarily think the next move is needed. You don't need to play this as white. But Magnus in this game goes for a positional squeeze. So it's not as tactical as some of the other games we've seen, but maybe it will suit your style. And one idea Black often has in these positions is to play knight to h5, trying to gain the bishop on f4. Now, I'm not necessarily certain this is a major threat. And I've just played knight to d2 in this position on a number of, on a number of games I've had. And this is quite a tricky move because, OK, I want to finish my normal setup given a chance. And at some point, black has to decide whether to go d5 or c5. Now, 
If black plays d5, we're back into the previous videos we've looked at in this series. And if he plays c5 here, I consider this a slight mistake because of knight d2. How can white take advantage of this c5 move? Well, knight to c4 can lead to a very problematic position for black. That knight is aiming to come into d6, and if d5, knight to e5 leaves white with a fantastic position. There's a threat of moving the other knight to g5, just winning the pawn on f7. There's also ideas of bishop to b5 check. So uh, this, this opening, black really at some point has to go d5 or c5, and then we're, we're really back on what we know from the previous videos. But let's see Magnus's approach here. He just goes h3. And the idea is allowing the bishop to tuck itself away upon the h2 square if black ever plays knight to h5. So Magnus has a lot of respect for his bishops in the early stage of the game, and he wants to just tuck his bishop here if black attacks it. So the game continued with normal development, bishop e7, bishop d3. And again, this, this goes with our what we've looked at earlier on in our videos on this, both sides castled. If you're going to play h3 as white, you, you generally want to go for a more positional approach. You're not going for a crazy attack as we've seen previously. You'll go for a normal positional approach. So white simply castled. Now black played c5. We don't have any knight c4 moves, which is often a good way of meeting c5 if we can play that, trying to get our knight into d6 as we've just seen. But here Magnus just finished his triangle, finished his pyramid, played c3. Black developed his last piece, knight to c6, and now knight to d2. And again, this is what we've seen in the other videos. All the white pieces have got to their normal squares, and now white can consider what to do. Normally in this type of structure, I'd be trying to go e4 or knight to e5, as we've seen. Black decides he needs to do something in the middle, so he plays d5. And now we see a very, I think, clever play from Magnus. Rather than trying to force the issue here by playing a move such as knight to e5 here, he takes a very mature outlook on the position. He basically thinks, what can my opponent do? And he comes to the conclusion that black's not really threatening anything dangerous if black ever pushes the pawn with c4. This is normally a mistake because black can no longer have a little bit of pressure on the d4 pawn and black can't really improve the position of his pieces so much so magnus realizing that his opponent can't do a great deal decides i'm going to take my time and improve my pieces so in order to improve white's pieces what should white do well first of all white places his queen on a good central square and he does an idea which is called connecting the rooks this means both rooks can now come into the game on some better square and maybe e4 is an option later on black decides to play bishop to d6 thinking exchanges may help his position and now magnus just plays rook to e1 very subtle bringing both the rooks to the middle of the board and this is another idea that we haven't seen yet uh, and this is an idea where you're allowing black to take on f4 if you so wish in the game black decided to play knight to e7, a very standard maneuver. If black had captured on f4, what was Magnus's idea? Well, he would have taken with his e-pawn, and he has this pressure on the half-open e-line. Yes, he does have double pawns, but sometimes double pawns can be a strength, and this is one of those cases. This pawn gives extra control of the key e5 square. As we've already mentioned, the e-file is open, and in general, this just seems to help white, this double pawn. And remember what we said at the start, this bishop on b7 is such a bad piece as long as we keep the top of our pyramid here because we don't want to allow black's d pawn to come forwards because if that pawn ever did come forwards, the bishop has a much greater range. So Tomaszewski decided, OK, I'm just going to move my knight to a better square. So he goes knight e7, and again, great patience by Magnus, an idea we saw Kamsky use, but Magnus was the first player to do this, rook a d1. And this is a weightening, an opening on the d file. So at some point, 
this D file will open up when the rook will be on a great position. Uh, one thing my dad told me when I was playing chess, he was really my only coach. He was a good chess player. And he said, Simon, you, you can you can never go wrong by positioning your rook opposite your enemy's queen because somehow later on, when exchanges happen, this is always going to benefit you. And I remember that rule. And that, that's true here. And now Tomaszewski played knight to g6. And here we see the, this, in my eyes, brilliant positional exchanges. And we're going to see how these exchanges really help Magnus's position. Because I, for one, would not be eager to swap off this bishop of mine. It looks like a great piece, the d3 bishop. But Magnus has this great understanding of of the position and he and he realizes that later on the more exchanges he makes the worse this bishop on b7 will become and this is really such a great positional game and this is a little tip we should all learn from let's always think try to work out which of our opponent's minor pieces is his worst piece and here we can see it's the bishop on b7 because it is stuck behind this pawn it's blocked in i mean Let's say, for example, the bishop on f4, we could place that back on c1. You could then see, let's imagine that bishop being placed back on the c1 square, just how bad that bishop would be. That bishop would be trapped behind your pawns, your white pawns. And it's the same for the bishop on b7. So Magnus realizes this, and this is something we should do. Look, up, look at our opponent's worst pieces. And he simply makes exchanges to pinpoint the enemy's worst pieces. So he exchanges on g6. He exchanges on d6. He takes the e5 square and he's figuring, well, my knights are going to be better than your minor pieces. And here black plays, I would say, a rather ambitious move. I think white's plan, if black doesn't do anything, will be to expand with f4. And then later on, maybe even to start an attack with g4. Because we have a closed position, and when the pawn structure is locked, it's okay to push pawns in front of your king. But as a rule, you should never push pawns in front of your king if it's an open position. If that bishop was had greater range, I wouldn't want to play g4. My king would become too weak. But as the bishop is locked, I can play that move. If I was black here, I would have played a move like a5, trying to bring the bishop to a better diagonal on a6. But Tomaszewski played g5, trying to stop f4. And now f4 anyway. Magnus switches from positional play to tactical play. Black takes on f4. And here I think any normal mortal would go pawn takes pawn. But Magnus plays very ingeniously with rook to f1. And the point of this is he wants to take with a rook on f4, figuring his rook will have a much greater range on the f file. It will put pressure on black's king. But of course, this does involve a sacrifice, which black declined. Black played knight d7 in the game. If black had taken on e3, let's have a quick look at some possible variations. I think Magnus would just take with a queen back. And here he's got great compensation. And again, this is a, a sign of a very strong player being able to move from positional play straight into tactical play. And there's ideas now of playing some sacrifice on f6 at the correct uh, correct time, opening up the king. Black would have to play g takes and maybe queen at g3 check. You've also got ideas of queen g3 first, threatening rook takes f6. And other ideas just include doubling on the f file when the f7 pawn will be a major weakness. So this is clearly compensation. I mean, maybe Tomaszewski should have gone for this anyway. Because there's a little rule, if your position's bad, well, you might as well take a risk and be a pawn up with a bad position. In the game, Tomaszewski played knight d7. And now Magnus played queen to h5. Another excellent move. Controlling the knight. And he wants to just move a pawn to e5. And again, this is a typical idea in the London system. Try to get a pawn to e5. Always take with a pawn on e5. If black takes on e3 here well knight takes f7 would be disastrous for black so tom chesky tries to repeat the position but magnus places queen on a more aggressive square and now if black takes on e3 there's certainly ideas of rook takes f6 
and Queen takes f6 with, a, with at least a draw, but uh, a lot more, I'd imagine. Queen d8 played, trying to control the f6 square. And now Magnus takes on f4 of his rook. Tomaszewski feeling some pressure because there's ideas of rook f1 and rook takes f6 floating in the air, decides a queen exchange will help his position. He plays knight to e4, but Magnus proves the exchange of queens does not help the position. He takes on e4. Black takes the queen off. And of course, some forced exchanges here. And we reach this position. And now look at what Magnus has done. He's left black with this bishop on b7. Now, this bishop we noted earlier on is a bad piece. It's still a bad piece. It doesn't have anywhere stable it can move to. It's blocked in by its own pawn. If it comes to a6, it doesn't have anywhere to attack on that file. And it's a bit loose, as we're going to see. It's loose to an attack. So all these exchanges and little tactical sequences White has done has gone to prove this bishop is bad. Brilliant positional play. Magnus now thinks about his pieces. His knight is very good, so you don't need to move that. The rook on h4 is okay, but the rook on d1, that can move into a better square. So he takes on c5, and now rook d7. The bishop, nowhere to escape to. If bishop d5, c4 comes, trapping that bishop. If the bishop goes to a6, well, you'd lose the pawn on e4. So you have to defend the bishop, rook to b8. And now another thing we can learn from, very clever move coming up. Magnus realizing what Black's next idea is, he's basically thinking, and this is something again we can learn from, what can Black move in this position? Let's go through it one by one. And this is something we need to do. Think about our opponent's moves more in order to become better players. Well, the rook on f8 can't move because we'll win the f7 pawn. So we've got to cancel that one out. The king clearly can't move. The rook on b8 can't move because we'd lose the bishop. Black can't really move any pawns. He can't move the pawn on f7 because then white would play knight to g6 and rook h8 checkmate. If he moves the pawn on g5, it will just weaken his king. So he can't really do anything. The only move black has up his sleeve is a bishop c8 move and then rook takes b2. So we've got to stop this idea and very simply b3 stops everything and black is getting into a position of zugzwang where he can't move anything at all every move loses something bishop c8 now would lose the a pawn and you don't want to be a pawn down against magnus so the game finished a5 and now rook c7 getting ready to pick off some pawns a4 black is helpless he still can't move any of his pieces magnus simply takes that pawn the bishop goes to a8 with some dream of moving the rook in with counterplay. Magnus just pushes that pawn. Rook to b7, trying to exchange off that active rook on c7. But now the second pawn is gone. Rook takes c5. Rook a7, black, so passive. And after knight to c4, Tomaszewski resigned, two pawns down. That knight is coming in to b6 and... Well, for someone of Magnus's strength, this is an easily winning position. Maybe even rook to h5 creating checkmate ideas could be a consideration here. But a lovely game there. And again, the opening is, you know, if you fancy playing, let's go back and have a look. The, the London in a more positional way, then you can certainly consider playing it in the way that Magnus Carlsen did here. First of h3, and then once you've done your normal developing moves, as we see here, just bring your pieces, your rooks into the center. In order to do this, you've got to make sure your opponent's doing nothing active. White does that here. And then we see a, a sure sign of why Magnus is such a strong player. He makes some, should we say, out-of-the-box exchanges. And he does this all in order to leave this bishop on b7. He combines this with some great tactical ideas of rook to f1. Maybe black should have taken the pawn and defended because his position was bad anyway. And then later on, after more pieces get exchanged, we see that the accumulation of his plan is that he has left black with his bad piece. So there's a lot we can all learn from that game. One of the best positional games from my perspective of 2016. And obviously that will help us learn more about the London system as well.